I'm sure you're used to it as a coach too. You know, I've got, I mean, I'm sure you deal with a lot of people in the States, am I right, from time to time? Yeah, so that's my main demographic uh, over there. So people assume that I'm from America as oh, well. Oh, right. So I just, I take it as a compliment. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I think I did too, at one point. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe it's my style, who knows. Yeah, right. No, I think it's your accent. Yeah, you sound American. <laughs> cool, man. Well, I appreciate a little bit of your time just jumping on, man. It was, it was cool to just shoot you a message, hear back from you, and I'm like, that'll be really neat to chat with him a little bit, you know? You provide a lot of value in the industry as well as for myself, so I appreciate it. 100%, man. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Um, well, dude, the first time I actually came across you was like, it was like beginning of summer last year. Like, I was on a cutting journey, and I was just at a point where like I wasn't able to get to the gym a lot. So, you know, you go ahead and YouTube the good old at-home workout, and boom, there you were. And I love just the follow along right. the whole the whole workout and um, I was hooked. I was doing your workouts for like weeks in a row. And then I saw a couple of your videos, cold shower the whole nine yards. So um, it was neat the way I came across you and just kind of stuck with it, you know. So you got me hooked. I mean, I've, I've practiced this one ever since I saw your, um, I think it was the 365 video, you know, you did it for a, for a whole year mm -hmm. in a row. Um, and that's gotta be brutal. Like you explained how, you know, it's, it's tough to do in the winter, especially when it's cold all the time and your body's a little more frigid and cold. But um, yeah, I mean, it's something I've, I've done more so over time, just even for the, the energy aspect, you know, obviously it's, it's always a challenge. It's always um, good to endure something that is uncomfortable, you know, but I also noticed like I was getting a lot of vitality from it. Like you got out of the shower and you're like, woo, you feel all energized, you know? 100%. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what, what got you into doing that? Like, what got you to start on the cold showers in the first place? Um, I believe I saw, I can't remember exactly who it was, but uh, I saw a video similar to you where it was just uh, a little introduction to it, why you would want to do it, and then thought, well, why not? Let's give it a go. And uh, the first morning I did it, it was the largest cup of coffee I think I've ever had in my life. It just <laughs> snaps you in the gear. Gets you moving, and um, yeah, we've hooked ever since. Yeah, nice. So speaking of that, I mean, do you have like um, a, a pretty regimen morning routine too? Like, has it changed over time to adapt with your lifestyle and what you do now? And are cold showers like a, a part of that? Mm, yeah, definitely, I would say so. So, pretty regimented morning routine. I, I find that that if you can set it up in the morning and you set the day off right, then the rest will follow. So, I usually wake up. I'll uh, have a cup of water. I think that's the first and foremost. Um, so many people are dehydrated throughout the day. If you can just start it off first thing in the morning, then that's the best way to go about it. Right. And I'll usually uh, read. So I'll read for about 30 minutes mm. and then I'll uh, journal directly after. So that'll oh, take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how much I have to say. And then um, I'll really have a shower and then get on with the day. Wow, that's interesting. I feel like it's different for everyone, but I've never heard of anyone say they read first thing in the morning. Like, I feel like I fall back asleep. You know, when I get up, I have to have like a radical change. You know, I've got this breathing right. exercise I do, you know, get my foam yeah. rolling, you know, get the blood flowing a little bit. Sometimes I get the workout first thing in the morning, but sitting back down yeah, and reading, okay. huh? It's interesting. What kind of content do you read if you don't mind me asking? Like more so fitness content, self-development? Fitness, self-development, a bit of philosophy, uh, stoicism. I usually play around with a lot of things, but typically it will be centered around fitness, business, philosophy, those kind of things. So speaking yeah. of the workouts, like, do you produce mostly like the the at home workouts for content purposes, or do you perform a lot of in home workouts in conjunction with your your weight workouts? I'll typically have uh, the weight the weight program as, as the anchor, so I'll always be doing that. And um, then I suppose from the co the content perspective, uh, the home workouts are are a bit 50-50. So I can knock it out as a cardio as well as producing some content for people. Right. So it's a win-win. Audience-wise, I'd say most appreciates um, things that, that I suppose save them time as well as are convenient. So I'd say the home workouts are, are a big one uh, for that. Meals as well, because I don't think there's a whole lot of nutritional or, exact, or, or specifically examples on the internet or, or videos on YouTube. But for myself personally, I'd say uh, anything with a bit more excitement, I'd say uh, a challenge or a vlog, definitely uh, something that, that gets my ideas going. But uh, yeah, from an audience perspective, definitely appreciate the value more. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And personally, I mean, what would, do you enjoy producing all that type of content? Does it ever feel like work or is it just natural to produce that content based on the response that you get? No, it never really feels like work. I suppose because um, the chat, it, it's tough right now, but obviously you can't, you can't, we can't go very far in Melbourne but I would prefer the, I suppose the excitement. I always find that I can I can edit uh, a vlog and it's like a, it's like a little bit of a story, I'm enjoying it a little bit more, but yeah. the content, because it is purely value-based, I'm, I'm kind of, 
I'm not really uh, reliving that moment. It's just it's purely value. So nice. yeah, I'm completely comfortable with both, and uh, I never really feel like work. Awesome. So did I hear you say that you um, edit edit your content? I mean, do you have a team that does that stuff yeah. for you? Wow, you edit all. No, I, I'm still 100 percent editing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fair enough. I, I um, yeah, I, I suppose a lot of people have that thought as well. Yeah. It's got to be um, someone else doing it. Yeah, I mean, dude, kudos to you. I mean, I've realized, you know, over time what it takes to produce a quality YouTube video, you know, even a five minute video, you can tell yeah. hours go into it, you know, so that's awesome that you still yeah. produce it all yourself. Most people try to outsource that, but uh, very neat. Yeah. Okay, neat. Yeah, so it's one on one. Um, it's an ongoing uh, coaching service. So doesn't really depend on, it's not like a six week come on board, you do six weeks of workouts and then kumbaya to you, you get on your way. It's, it's more of a specified thing. So it's gonna depend on the, the client's individual needs, uh, how many times they, they can work out a week, uh, how motivated they are as well. So if they really wanna get to their goals or how extensive their goals are, it's all gonna come down to that. And then it's just um, upkeep, keeping them on track, yeah. like checking in making sure that sticking to the meals and if, if something's not working, we, we mix it up and we make sure that they can get towards where they want to go. Yeah. So is there a, a lot of personalization involved? I mean, are you, are you doing a lot of updating and tweaking based on each individual? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a, a four week, usually a four week block and then we'll move some things around if, if needs be. Um, and then meals as well. So that's the biggest, the biggest part I'd say because that's where a lot of people struggle. So it's just making sure that the meal plan is suitable for them. It, it, they have to be enjoying it. If they're not, they're more than likely going to quit. For sure. Yeah. So are you, are you an advocate yeah. of flexible dieting? Are you pretty regimented with like the types of foods, meal timing and all that? Are you pretty like flexible based on, you know, a client? Yeah, definitely when it comes down to uh, just clientele, the, uh, the flexible dieting is the way to go because when it, most most people are not trying to be Arnold Schwarzenegger or Kai Green or Phil Heath, get up on stage, 5% body fat. Uh, ripped, shredded. They're just trying to improve their bodies, improve their physiques, get a little bit stronger, more athleticism. Um, you know, someone's coming around, they want to trim back some fat. They just want to know the, know how to do that and make it as easy as possible for them to do that. Obviously, there's a limit, so it's flexible dieting. It's not just throwing out all principles altogether. Well, if it fits, then you can have it. So chocolate bars come in, cheeseburgers, this, that, the other thing. But from my approach, it's, it's more about setting a boundary and setting uh, a rule in place. I totally agree, man. That's I think that's a great methodology within fitness. You know, there's a lot of clients, you know, coming from like the personal training days, which I think is fading now, obviously this whole COVID and everything, you know, there's a lot less in-person stuff. Yeah. Um, it'll never go away completely, but like, you know, it was always about retainers, you know, gyms, big box gyms, it was always about keeping that, the clientele base going, let's be honest, for the revenue yeah. um, aspect. But we know from fitness, like, you know, not only can you get someone where they need to go, but you, you can teach them what they need to know to continue to pursue that goal or change their goal or just understand their body and fitness enough to where really they can take a handle on it themselves. So, you know, my max is uh, five months. I mean, that's the most I'll usually work with a client because I've got the process down yeah. to where they can really learn what they need to know within that time to be confident enough to carry it out on their own successfully. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but isn't there, you're leaving so much money on the table, you're leaving such a retainer aspect. And it's like, there's more to it than that though, right? It's not always about yeah. retaining clients and keeping them on board, right? Yeah, 100%, I think that's a great philosophy to have. Yeah. Uh, if you can, but then also, if you even know that, so they get what they need in a short amount of time, they learn the, the things that they need to know, and they feel as though they can do it on their own, then they can pass on a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of um, hey, Tyler Kelly you taught me this and that and the other thing. So it's a bit of word of mouth there as well. So if you give a good service, that's uh, that's the end of the game. Yeah. How do you kind of start out with that first four-week block of the clients who kind of attack their goal based on where they may be at? Yeah. Yeah. So similar to you, it's it's all about where the client's currently sitting. So if they are, you know, if they've, they've had severe metabolic damage or right. or they are uh, on the opposite spectrum, they're they're. Uh, overweight or obese or they're just trying to find ways that they can start to develop um, a, a better nutritional regimen then it's all about setting themselves up with there and not making any super crazy radical changes because if someone goes from 100 percent or zero zero percent to 100 then they're likely to at some point get back to zero percent because it's hard to keep up we want to slowly compound um, the changes so week by week or, or month by month as long as the client remains comfortable that is the most important thing so you want to make it like an effortless transition it doesn't have to be a, an arduous task i suppose so that is the goal yeah yeah i mean it's about making it a part of your lifestyle not your entire lifestyle right yeah. 
changing exactly, as few yeah. components as possible to fit it into your life and not have to uh, worry about this whole other burden of fitness on a daily basis, you know? Yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Neat, neat. I suppose I'm trying to, I'm, I'm coming from an understand, an understanding perspective. So I understand these things are tough. I understand that people have uh, lives and, and they're not as extreme or strict as a lot of people in the industry. So a lot of people think, all right, well, you gotta do this way. You gotta do it this, like this, that. But you can play around with things. There's, there's a lot of ways that this can be done. So for me, it's just a genuine, a, a genuine desire to help people. And that comes from empathy. It comes from understanding what they're going through and that it is a tough process and you need to make it easy for them. You need to reach out and offer the information and, and just have no expectations as well. Have no expectations of people. So if they want to put in the work, they will put in the work. If they don't, then you're going to be there to help them whenever they want to put in their work. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, we're all on the same mission. Well, it is an interesting we're question. We're here to impact lives in the best way possible, make fitness a part of people's lives, not their entire lives, and it's, it's just so neat what we're capable of. I'm also curious, like, what was the worst spot you've ever been? Like, have you ever been, like, skinny fat? Have you ever been big? Yeah, so I was, um, when I first started, I, I was under the assumption that if I wanted to develop a, a nice physique, you know, get enough athletic body, that the only way to do that was just to lose weight. So I went on a, a strict weight loss journey and I actually ended up being uh, 53 kilograms, which is, um, I think about 120 pounds maybe. Um, so really, really light. Uh, and, and even at that point, I was thinking, wow, how can I still get more athletic? I've got to continue to lose weight. So I did went, go on a, on a pretty vicious, a pretty vicious cycle, um, only to realize that, okay, this isn't the way to do it. I've got to research, I've got to educate myself, figure it out. Um, muscle actually requires calories to build, so yeah, that is um, that is a realization. And then, yeah. That's pretty much all I have for you, man. I, I appreciate you um, cool. taking a little time out of your day to do this. I mean, you're, I'm a huge advocate of yours, and I think you're inspiring a lot of uh, coaches like myself to just continue to, you know, push further in the fitness industry to impact lives in such a great way based off what we've accomplished and what we can give back. So I uh, appreciate you, a little bit of your time, and I look forward to keeping in touch. Fantastic. Good to meet you, Tyler. I'll talk to you All soon. Right, Frazier. Have a good one, bud. See you, man. You too. All right.